Hi friends, welcome to Abhi Tutorials. In this lesson, I will be covering conditionals and loops in Python. The first topic we are going to see in this lesson is conditionals. In Python, we have multiple conditionals as listed here. Let's now go through them one by one. The first conditional statement we are going to look into is the if statement. The if statement validates whether the expression which follows it is true or false. Only if the expression is true, then the statement given within the if block is executed. In the given example, we have created two variables a and b with values 10 and 20 respectively. In this if statement, we have the expression which checks whether a is greater than b. As per the example, a greater than b evaluates to true and hence the value within the if block will be displayed in the output. Now we are going to look into the if else statement. Similar to previous example, we have two variables a and b with values 10 and 20 respectively. The if statement checks whether a is greater than b. But it returns false since b is greater here. So the statement within if block is not executed and the statement flow goes to the else statement and the statement within the else block is printed. The next statement we are going to see is the elif statement. In certain cases, we may need to validate multiple conditions and a single if else statement may not suffice. In such scenarios, we can use the elif statement as displayed here in this example. In the given example, we have two variables a and b with the same value 30. In this if statement, we evaluate if a is greater than b. Since a is not greater than b, the control flow moves to the elif statement where it evaluates whether b is greater than a. Even this evaluation returns false and the statement within elif block also skipped. Since the elif also failed, the control flows to the else statement and the statement within the else block gets executed. The output will be the content of the else block as displayed here. The conditional statement we have seen in the previous slides can also be nested. Nested is nothing but adding the conditionals within the block of the parent conditionals. In the example given here, we have nested the if statements as highlighted. As per the example given, the first if statements evaluates to true and the text a is greater than b will be printed. The inner if a greater than 50 also evaluates to true and the corresponding statement within its block also will be printed. The final nested if will be evaluated to false and hence it won't be displayed in the output. The next topic we are going to discuss are the iterables. Here we will see what an iterable is, example of iterated type objects and finally we will look into the for and while loops. An iterable is a Python object with multiple items that can be traversed through and has the capability to return one item at a time. Let's now see some common iterable objects that we use in Python. Listed here are few examples of common iterables we use in Python. Python also supports custom iterables, that is, you can create your own iterable object. To do so, you will have to implement that underscore underscore iter and the underscore underscore next functions within your object. We will create a custom iterable objects in forthcoming sessions. Python also has the iter and the next functions. The iter function is used to return an iterator object from any supported objects. For example, consider an array A with certain items as highlighted here. The next statement c equal to iter of a will return the iterable of a and the iterable will be stored in the variable c. Then we have the next function which can be used to retrieve values from the iterable. 
when executed once the next of c will return the first item from the iterable here it is 23 if you run next once again it will return next item from the list that is 34 and it will continue till the end of the list item consider a list of items as given here to get items from the list we have to traverse through the items and get the items one by one as displayed here we have already seen how to use the next function to achieve the same but accessing items from a sequence can also be achieved using a process known as looping there are two main looping techniques in python namely the for and the while loops let's now look into the loops one by one the syntax of the for loop is as given here. The for loop continues to loop till there is a value in the sequence. Now let's see how the for loop works. Consider a list A with some items as displayed here. To access the items within the list, we have created a for loop. The variable i corresponds to a single item within the list. When the loop is executed for the first time, i contains the first value of the list in A corresponds to all the items in the list A. Within the for block, we have the print statement which will continue to print the items with the values from the list one by one till the last item. When the for loop is first executed, it will pick the first value from the array and it will be displayed using the print statement. And the loop continues till the last item in the list as highlighted here. We also can make modifications to the value we have received from the list. For example, here we are adding 10 to the item. And the updated result is as highlighted here. We also can run the loop for a limited number of times by making use of range function as displayed here. The output for the same is as displayed here. The next type of loop we are going to look is the while loop. The syntax for the while loop is as given here. While loop evaluates whether the expression given next to it evaluates to true. Only if the statement evaluates to true, the control passes to the loop and the loop is run till the expression returns false. Make sure that you always add a statement within the while loop that will falsify the expression. Otherwise, the while loop can easily go into an infinite loop. Let's now see few examples of the while loop. In this example, we have a boolean variable a which is set as true. We have another numeric variable i which is initialized as 0. In the next line, we start the while loop with the value a set as the expression. Since a is true, the flow control enters into the while block and increments the value of i to 1. Then it prints the value of i as 1. Then the if statement is compared to check if i is equal to 5. Since at this stage i is not equal to 5, the flow control moves to the expression in while to check if it is still true. Since a is still true, the value of i is incremented again and the incremented value is printed. The loop continues till i becomes 5 where it prints the number 5 and then we have the validation in the program to check if i equal to equal to 5 since i is now 5. The value for a is set as false. And now when the control moves to the expression in while, a is now false and the control exists from the loop. Given here is another example of the while loop which prints the content of a list. Where in the while loop we check whether i is less than the length of the list a. If i is less than the list length, then the item in the corresponding index number of a is printed. The value of i is then incremented and the process continues till it reaches the length of the list. Loop control statements are used to control the execution of statements altering the normal sequence. We have three loop control statements in Python which are break, 
continue and the past statements respectively. Let's now see each of them with examples. The break statement is used to break from the innermost enclosing loop. In the given example, the for loop is supposed to print the numbers from 1 to 10. But since we have the break statement when the item 6 is encountered, the control X is from the for loop and just prints the items from 1 to 5. The continue statement is used to skip the execution of current item and continues with the next iteration. In the example given here, the value 5 and 7 are skipped in the output since we have added a continue statement in the corresponding conditionals. The purpose of past statement is to do nothing. In certain areas, we may mandatorily need to add one or other statements due to syntactical requirements. Else, we may encounter error as displayed here. We will use pass in such areas as displayed here. As per the example given here, if the value of i is less than 7, then the program will do nothing. If i is greater than or equal to 7, then the corresponding values are printed. That ends this lesson. Thanks for watching our video. Stay tuned and please like, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.